just to linger briefly on uh, the way Marxism is used as a term on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, there's something called, I'm sorry if I'm using the terms incorrectly, but yeah. uh, cultural Marxism. Right. One of the criticisms of universities um, being infiltrated by cultural Marxists. <laughs> right. um, I'm not exactly sure. I don't pay close enough no attention. No one is. No, no, no. I but, do. but it's woke. It's yes. there's a there's a kind of woke ideology that I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, right. What it's is not you? That what is the fundamental text? <laughs> yeah. Who's the none. Karl Marx of of wokeness? Yeah, uh, all I do know is that there's certain characteristics of um, woke ideology, which is hard lines are drawn between the good guys and the bad guys. And uh, and basically everyone is a bad guy except except the people that are very loudly nonstop saying that they're the good guy, and that applies across for for inter, for, for you know, racism, that, yeah. for sexism, for uh, gender um, all the, gender right. politics, identity politics, all that kind of stuff. Is there is, is there any parallels between? Marxian economics and Marxist ideology and whatever is being called Marxism on Twitter. No, not much. Mostly Marx. You have to. One of the consequences of the taboo after World War II is that Marxism, like socialism and communism, become swear words. It's like calling somebody. Well, I won't use bad language, but <laughs> using a four-letter word to describe somebody. Yes. So instead of calling them, you know this or that, you call them a Marxist. In many circles, this is even worse than whatever other adjective you might have used. But it, it doesn't have a particular meaning uh, that I can uh, assess. The closest you get is your little list. It is somebody who is concerned about uh, race and sex and uh, sexual orientation, and gender, and, and that, all of those things and wants there to be transgendered bathrooms and and that and I don't like any of these people so I slap the word marxism or the phrase cultural marxism because it isn't marxism about getting more money or controlling the industry or all those things that dimly we know marxists somehow are concerned about. So this is odd since they don't know much about Marxism. I've always been interested in culture. I mean, Lukács, the man I mentioned to you before, Gramsci, that's what they're famous for, the analysis of what Marxism particularly has to say about culture. Gramsci writes at great length about the Catholic Church, about theater and painting in, in Italy and on and on. I mean, this is just ignorance talking. They don't know anything about that. They wouldn't know what the names are. It's a it's a label that summarizes kind of a shorthand. I'm against all of this. I don't want to be told that there's ugly racism in this country, and it always has been, or sexism, or um, uh, phobia against gay people, or whatever it is that's agitating them. And then Marxism or socialism. I mean, it's just... It's like socialism is the post office. It, it, it is it is a mentality. Well, but I don't blame them. I mean, it's childish. It's mean-spirited. But it comes out of the fact no one ever sat them down and said, you know, here is this tradition. It's got these kinds of things that people kind of share and these big differences. Look, an intelligent society, which this country is, could have and should have done that. It was fear and a kind of terror that made them behave in the way they did, and we're now seeing it. Having said that, there is such a thing as cultural Marxism. What that is is simply those Marxists who devoted themselves to analyzing how it is that a particular culture is on the one hand shaped by capitalism and on the other hand becomes a condition for capitalism to survive and grow. In other words, how do we analyze the interaction between uh, the class struggle on the job and attitude towards sexuality or m movements in music or wh whatever else culture? And there are 
Georg Lukács, this Hungarian, great name in there, the greatest of all the names, uh, Antonio Gramsci, and a modern name, just died a couple years ago, a British intellectual named Stuart Hall, H-A-L-L. You want to, if you want, if, if I were teaching, which I have done, a course in cultural Marxism, those would be three major blocks on the syllabus. I would give you articles and books to read of their stuff because it has been so seminal in provoking uh, many, many others. So there is something to be said and understood about the kind of culture that capitalism creates and the kind of culture that enables capitalism. Yes, and, and Marxists are particularly those who like to look at that interaction. Mm -hmm. In other words, they're interested in how capitalism shapes culture and how culture shapes capitalism. There's another name I forgot. Um, Stuart Hall is British. Gramsci is Italian, Lukács is Hungarian, um, the German is Walter Benjamin, B-E-N-J-A-M-I-N. -E he was a member of the Frankfurt School, which is a huge school of Marxism that developed in Frankfurt, Germany, and that has a lot of people, many of whom were interested in cultural questions. It was a bit of a reaction against the narrow Marxism that was so focused on economics and politics. There were people who said, you're leaving out very important parts of modern society that are shaping the economy as much as they are shaped by it. And it was that impetus to open Marxism to be more inclusive in what it deemed to be important to understand that this cult, and they call themselves cultural Marxists, but they had a completely different meaning from this. This is just... Uh, you know, just bad mouthing. That's all this is.